someone just doesn't pick up a chainsaw and says, I can do that, and, and right off the bat, come up with a great piece. It takes a lot of practice to use it like a pencil. And that's what we're doing. Is it's just a tool to remove the ice and to get the figure that's already there, the one that we see. I wanted to change the, the way ice sculptures are perceived. People think they're for weddings, for buffet pieces. No, I want them to say, no, I saw this cowboy at Discovery Green chopping ice with a massive chainsaw. You know, he created a Phoenix breathing fire. Reverend Butter! And I preach a lot of uh, dedication, loyalty, and greatness. Because without dedication and being loyal to your craft, you will never, ever achieve greatness. Hey, this is Reverend Butter, and you're here at the secret location of DLG Ice Factory. My real name is Rolando de la Garza. He wanted to learn to carve ice in 98 and slowly manifested into Reverend Butter. If you look around, this is kind of like Sanford and Son with Texas Chainsaw Massacre and a little sprinkle of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. <laughs> my dad's a machinist. 82 years old, still machine. I, I used to help my dad work on these machines and work with him, and now I'm still working here. Happy Christmas to you. Yeah. Oh. This is the place I was born and raised, and now this is where my dreams come to life. So the art of ice sculpting, it's very old art, and it's progressed a lot throughout the years. I started in 1998. When I started, it was all chainsaws and chisels. Uh, it was an old school artisan method. I like to keep it alive. A lot of people are now fabricating sculptures. They're not actually creating them by hand. And that's a, a lost art in itself. So we like to promote and keep that alive, which is why we do a lot of festivals, a lot of live shows. Give it up for 20 years for DLT Ice Factory. <laughs> Buddy Rasmussen uh, from San Antonio, he originated the Friday Night Ice Fights. It's uh, two ice carvers go at it, three 15-minute rounds, 600 pounds of ice each. And within those three 15-minute rounds, they have to create something extraordinary, amazing. And the audience gets to pick their favorite. Because people actually get to see what we can do in a matter of minutes with our hands and a chainsaw. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. As you're carving, something could get broken, knocked off. If you're lucky enough to catch it and save it, you just got to create and, and roll with it. You got to change your design. I've had things break on me many a times, but only I know that. <laughs> it's how you fix it. It's a great energy. Uh, your adrenaline's going. You're soaking wet. You're ice cold. Uh, you don't feel it till afterwards. Just like a boxer after a fight, when you're done, then you start feeling everything, every single muscle. <laughs> this isn't for everybody. Lugged at around 300 pounds, you're either gonna get stronger or you're gonna quit. And most of us, we got stronger, but there's a lot more people who've quit. I've gotten to see a lot of the world through this craft be asked to be part of certain ice festivals in Banff Lake Louise, uh, Canary Wharf in London, UK, uh, Fairbanks, Alaska at the World Ice Sculpting Championships. You do what you love long enough, time flies. I mean, 20 years almost, you know, and I'm still surprising myself. I preach a lot of uh, dedication, loyalty, and greatness, because without dedication and being loyal to your craft, you will never, ever achieve greatness.